So I've noticed that my channel has been receiving a considerable amount of attention recently and I figured that it might be worthwhile to give an update. Why? Given that there is one video that is clearly outperforming all of the other ones though, it might be better to just have these more informal discussions where we're talking about various things such as what is mathematics behind the scenes? For instance, what are mathematicians doing on a day-to-day -day basis? How is research being conducted? And perhaps various perspectives that would be beneficial for students or, or non-professional mathematicians to know about, but often they may not know the right questions to ask their professors or their professors aren't particularly interested in sharing this information. So I figured that Maybe videos like this are easier to produce. We'll see how, how easy this video is to produce. And maybe I'll be able to consistently put those types of videos out, or at least put them out with more frequency than once every six months or so. Just to give an indication of what these videos may entail, may not. It's obviously dependent on interest. So if there is a particular thing you would like me to talk about, then you should let me know in the comments. But one example that I came across the other day was how, how do discoveries occur in mathematics? This is something that I remember when, when I was an undergraduate student and studying all these courses, I was, I was like, well, well, surely the great mathematicians can just solve all the questions. And, and what am I, what, how do I produce anything new? This was very hard for the professors I asked to answer this. And I understand that uh, the reason why it's hard to answer now is that once you start doing research, kind of everything is research in a sense. Anything you do mathematically is often done with a research focus. So for instance, let, let, me, let me go through an example of how my research was conducted in, in uh, the course of my PhD. So I was advised by Professor Ben Andrews and Professor Kang Tian, who are two pioneers of uh, uh, differential geometry. And I started my PhD in, on January 1st of 2019. And I spoke with particularly uh, Tian about the problem area. And Tian gave me some papers to read on Kaler Ricci flow, which is a, a particular example of a, of a partial differential equation that's used in, in differential geometry. And he said, once you've read these, then I will give you a problem and you can, you can try the problem. And so after uh, two months or so, I felt that I had sufficiently understood his survey papers and, and papers that he suggested I read. He then gave me two problems and I could work on either of them or one of them depending on what was possible. And I worked on understanding what previous people had done. So I worked very hard to understand, you know, the details of all of these arguments. And then that proceeds and you, you learn all these other things along the way that may not be directly related, but potentially related. Often what happens is you, you need to understand a particular result which references a particular paper, you go into that paper, you now need to learn all of Hodge theory or something. And so you pull the books out, learn the Hodge theory, go back and proceed. And this is actually a, a very good way of learning because you not only uh, are learning quite a diverse amount of things, but you can see the utility of them. And that seems to at least encode it in the brain better. It seems to seems to be much easier to memorize things and uh, understand things when you're actually using it for this purpose of solving a problem. So months and months go by and then eventually what I try to do is I, I try to just, uh, so one thing I wanted to prove was that a certain inequality was true and we knew that a weaker inequality was true and you wanted to kind of bridge between the weaker one and the one you needed to solve the problem. And so what I did was, okay, well, what if I can just get an epsilon improvement, just slightly better. So if, if the estimate blows up like, uh, 
like 1 minus a log to some power, can I get a slightly uh, more controlled estimate? So that's the desired estimate, and let's suppose that what we have is 1 minus log to a power divided by some x to the 2m, where m is massive. So the point was, well, can we get 2m minus epsilon? That would be some improvement. It's obviously not a tremendous improvement, but, but uh, some improvement. And I worked, I followed these things, followed the calculations through, and showed that, okay, it works at least with epsilon small. Since this was such a hard problem, and since this was such an active and still an active problem to this day, that's, that was of interest. Not tremendous interest, that was nevertheless, it's still a contribution, and that's the first step. So then you do that, and then you go, okay, well, can I do even better? And you kind of just proceed in this way, and then, you know, I ended up being able to prove some some other thing along these lines. Now, along the way, one thing that tended to actually be the crux of these arguments was a general technique, which is more or less called the Schwartz lemma. And I ended up spending a lot of my time studying this bloody Schwartz lemma. And over the, over the years, I had spent more and more time studying this thing. And about a year later, after doing this other result, I got so well acquainted with it that I could actually produce results on the Schwartz lemma itself. That then uh, was put into another paper, and that was a research paper. And then I noticed that the, the Schwartz lemma was used in many other contexts, and given that I had made improvements on, on the Schwartz lemma itself, I could then transfer these improvements to other, other theorems and extend other results, because if their main tool is, is the Schwartz lemma, and I've improved the main tool, then you get improved theorems. So this is how I've proceeded, and, and this is really how kind of research goes, is you, you just continue to work, you explore, and you, you diversify a little bit, you have these core problems that you kind of keep in mind, but along the way you'll notice that, okay, well, I've gotten better at this, so as a consequence, that if that's useful in the, to other problems, you can then apply it to that. And so that's how you generate these theorems along the way. And so if you can check my papers on my website or on the archive, and you'll see that the Schwartz lemma is a central theme to my research. And it's the main workhorse behind what, or main workhorse behind the theorems that I've produced over the past, you know, couple of years. Of course, that only gives you a slight glimpse into how it works, you know, how do you actually get these improvements. One thing I will say is that you, you just work on trying to understand what was done previously and find the exact stumbling block that they reach, so they get to a certain point and then they can't go any further for some reason, you understand why, and you try to push that further. That's it. That's all the research is. Occasionally, you know, you'll get some great ideas that completely revolutionize the, the subject or completely revolutionize the problem or, or your perspective on the problem. I've had certain glimpses of, or small glimpses of this, and oftentimes those come out of accidents. You just are working on a problem, and then you're like, oh, if you actually put this and this together, you get this really interesting theorem. And then in hindsight, you can you know, pretend to have some sophisticated understanding, but oftentimes you're just following your nose and often just tripping over and then you, you stumble upon some great discovery. Hopefully great discovery. Hopefully, as I'll say it again, I can be slightly more consistent because given the analytics of the channel are uh, very positive at the moment, for reasons I have no idea why, uh, I will do my best to make more videos and upload more uh, but if you have any specific questions or are interested in certain things or hearing my perspectives on various questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to, to answer them in a video like this.